The Steelers' offense is set to be heavily focused on play action this season. I expect Pat Fryermuth to be on the field a lot. He's an excellent blocker and should have plenty of chances in the passing game. With a new quarterback and hopefully better overall play, particularly in the middle of the field, things are looking promising compared to the last few years in Pittsburgh. Training camp has just kicked off, and excitement is building. One of the big questions everyone is asking is whether the Steelers have a solid number two wide receiver and what the quarterback situation will look like. I'll dive into these topics and more, including some lesser-known points you might not have heard about yet. But before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a like and subscribe. It only takes a few seconds, and you can always change your mind later. We're on the road to 40K subscribers, and with your support, I believe we can hit that milestone quickly. As training camp begins, all eyes are on Russell Wilson and whether he can perform better for the Steelers than we've seen since 2020. He seems to have secured the starting quarterback position and is expected to get most of the first-team reps. With a strong running game and a deep threat like George Pickens, there's reason for optimism. The key question is how well Wilson will mesh with the offensive coordinator, especially when it comes to targeting the middle of the field, which hasn't been his strong suit. Early glimpses in training camp will be telling. While Wilson isn't typically known for his red zone efficiency, his mobility and play action skills could make a big difference. We won't fully see his scrambling and play extending abilities until game situations, but his leadership and experience will be crucial. If he can make smart decisions and get the ball to the right places, this offense could really take off. The media is buzzing about Wilson, noting his impressive offseason shape. He's clearly ready to prove himself as a Pittsburgh Steeler. Now let's shift gears to some other training camp topics like potential hold-ins from players like Cam Hayward, Najee Harris, and Pat Fryermuth, who are eyeing future contracts. Cam Hayward might be the most likely to hold in, given his contract stance. Najee Harris and Pat Fryermuth, however, might not have as strong a case. Both need to demonstrate their value this year. Fryermuth must show he's a reliable second receiving threat after Pickens while Harris needs to prove his worth in the offense. Unlike past hold-ins from players like TJ Watt and Minka Fitzpatrick, these guys aren't yet at that elite level. They need to show they belong among the league's best. So, while Hayward might have the leverage to hold in, Harris and Fryermuth should be out there proving themselves. The Steelers are increasingly aligning with league trends in their decision-making. They might view running backs as less valuable, which could affect Harris's contract talks. Heading into camp, the Steelers have a crowded wide receiver room, including Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin, and Roman Wilson, but none have yet established themselves as a clear number two receiver. The Steelers are expected to maintain their run-first identity, and with Arthur Smith's tight end friendly offense, the need for a true number two wide receiver might not be as pressing. Even though the free agent market is thinning out, don't count out the possibility of the team adding another playmaker during training camp. Now let's talk about the quarterbacks. Russell Wilson is likely to be the starter, but he still has a lot to prove after a challenging two years in Denver. While his numbers did improve in his second season with the Broncos, throwing 26 touchdowns and only eight interceptions compared to six touchdowns and 11 interceptions in 2022, his overall performance was still below expectations. His 50.7 QBR was the second lowest of his career, and he recorded his worst QBR of 38.7 in that rough 2022 season. Despite turning 36 this year, Wilson mentioned during minicamp that he's found the fountain of youth in Pittsburgh. The Steelers are certainly hoping that's true, as both Wilson and the team are looking for a fresh start and playoff success after recent disappointments. If Wilson struggles and can't limit his mistakes, Justin Fields might be waiting for his chance to step in. While the quarterback changes have made headlines, the signing of Patrick Queen is crucial for a team that faces tough ground battles in its division. Interestingly, just a few hours after the Ravens signed powerhouse running back Derrick Henry, the Steelers secured Queen, known for his skills as a three-down linebacker. The Steelers have long sought a replacement for Ryan Shazier and came close with Cole Holcomb, but Holcomb's season-ending knee injury last year has left a gap. Queen's addition not only upgrades the linebacker position, but also adds depth and flexibility as Holcomb recovers. 
Queen's toughness will complement veteran Elandon Roberts and the explosiveness of rookie Peyton Wilson. Next, let's discuss some sleepers who could make an impact and provide depth. First up is Ryan Watts, a defensive back drafted in the seventh round. Watts might compete for roles at both safety and cornerback this season. With Cam Sutton's suspension, Watts will likely get many chances to prove himself during training camp. The Steelers will want to see what their last draft pick can offer, which could open doors for him to make the team. With Sutton out for the first half of the season, the Steelers need a starting slot cornerback for Week 1. During minicamp, Josiah Scott emerged as a key candidate and should enter training camp as the top choice. Scott, a former Philadelphia Eagle, has NFL experience and a few starts under his belt. He's expected to secure a spot on the team, though he'll face some competition from Grayland Arnold and Beanie Bishop. 